Good morning. It is nine o'clock. I would like to call the city council meeting to order October 1st, 2014. All city council members and city officials are present. Please stand for the invocation and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Heavenly Father, we ask for your help as we try to share our individual and collective gifts with our community, to refurbish our intentions in a regular manner, to give of ourselves in ways that make a value difference to our families, our neighbors, to our town, and to our nation. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Thank you. First, we have proclamations and presentations. On the first one, we have a very special proclamation that Nancy Prasky will read. Thank you. It's a great honor to do this this morning. Um, I have to say, I'm, as, as Lisa Beaver said, I'm a bit giddy about this because I've <laughs> I've thought, you know, uh, when I first got to know the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program, and they were located in Fort Myers, and I thought, why? <laughs> so, uh, uh, it, this is awesome. Um, Proclamation, City of Punta Gorda, Florida. Whereas national estuaries are vital to migratory species, provide critical habitats for a variety of marine plants and animals, help prevent coastal erosion, are important recreational and tourist destinations, and are critical for future and the health of, for the future, for our future and the health of the oceans, and whereas national estuaries are a tremendous economic resource, providing jobs to coastal communities. And whereas, on July 6, 1995, the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program, as we call SHNEP, was established, and whereas the City Council and citizens of the City of Punta Gorda have demonstrated support and willingness to protect the Charlotte Harbor Estuary. And whereas, on June 18, 2014, the City of Punta Gorda was chosen by the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program Policy Committee to serve as the host agency for the local program. And whereas the City Council invites all citizens to join in the celebration of the official partnership between the City of Punta Gorda, Florida and the SHNEP, which becomes effective as of this date. Now therefore, the City of Punta Gorda welcomes the SHNEP as its new partner and neighbor as they relocate their offices to Punta Gorda City Hall and does hereby pro proclaim October 1st, 2014 as Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program Day. Passed and duly adopted in regular session this first day of October, 2014, City of Punta Gorda, Florida, Rachel Kiesling, Mayor. And I'd like to invite the entire staff of the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program to please come up here. <laughs> Would you like to say a few words at the podium? Okay, thank you. For the record, I'm Lisa Beaver, Short Harbor National Estuary <laughs> Program Director. Yay! And I'd like to begin with a few words. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we, we are so pleased to be here. Uh, we're proud to be uh, representing the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program, and we're <laughs> delighted to be newly minted City of Punta Gorda employees. Uh, it's lovely for the program to be just a few short steps from Charlotte Harbor proper, and Punta Gorda has always been a gleaming gem on Charlotte Harbor. And we're so delighted with your leadership, your administration, and your staff. You know, as we've made the transition into the city, they have been wonderful. You know, you as, as citizens should be so proud of the city that you've elected and the city that you've, you've developed. So thank you so much. to introduce Moran Hilgendorf. She's our communications manager and in charge of public outreach and works with our citizen advisory committee and all citizens are invited to participate upon uh, uh, appointment by our policy committee. Uh, this is Liz Donnelly. She's deputy director and she also handles our grants <coughs> and contracts. And uh, program scientist Judy Ott. Judy has been on the harbor for 20 years. 24 years. <laughs> 20 years. 
and has a great deal of, of knowledge about the natural systems here. And I'd also like to invite everybody, whether you're listening over the uh, cable system or whatever, to uh, join us at 1 o'clock for our special ribbon cutting. Thank you so much. Shall we? Yes, we've got some things uh, to make this official. Oh, I, I guess uh, that's why you're a great public artist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to present the city with a framed print. This is our signature image of an osprey over the Peace River. And so thank you. Thank you. Well, that's nice. I need to swear at you first. Oh, okay. oh. Ooh, official. <laughs> <laughs> Love this part, my Probably don't. Well, look, let's see. Karen's got hers on. Yeah, Karen's got hers. We wear them. Yeah, we wear them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Congratulations. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. 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 Now, if you don't live inside the city limits, we invite you to move here. <laughs> okay, next we have a presentation. Dean South of the Border and Hurricane Charlie's Restaurant Donation to the Public Safety Program. Who look, looks, who's taking the lead? Dean and Brenda. Dean and Brenda, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For the record, I'm Brenda Ryan. I'm Dean Stanton. We did a fundraiser uh, August 13th and the 10 year anniversary of Hurricane Charlie with the proceeds to be donated to first responders. We wanted to give to the city of PD. They brought their interactive trailer for the kids. The fire department brought their interactive trailer for the kids. So. We have checks. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For all of you that missed it, it was for all of you that missed it. It was the uh, ten-year celebration of Hurricane Charlie. Not only we survived, we thrived, and we would like to thank them again for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I bet you sold a lot of t-shirts that day. Yes, we did. I'm just saying. <laughs> They're still available if you want one. Ray Briggs, Fire Chief, for the record. I just want to say a couple of things. I want to thank Dean, Sandy, and Brenda for putting this whole thing together. Again, it was a great event. Um, you guys have done so much for the community, and we just appreciate all that you do. So thank you on behalf of all your first responders. Thank you. Joe Kang, number 187 from the Ponte Gorda Police Department. Um, you know, once again, everyone knows that we're very involved in our community. Um, one of the major things that we pride ourselves on is, is the, different, the variety of tactics that we use to reach our children. Um, between do the right thing, our jammers, our interactive trailer. Um, it, it's, it's nice to know that the community and the businesses in our community 
have, have recognized our efforts and support us by, by things of this very nature. So we want to thank you. Um, I just want to throw props out to last night. We had an event at Culver's or for Do the Right Thing to benefit, Do the Right Thing. The majority of our staff was there volunteering their time to partner with Culver's to raise money. Um, a lot of you in this room, Council Member Freeland showed up. Um, a lot of members of our city and our community showed up to support this event. Um, and once again, you know, it's, uh, it's all about the kids to us and we just want to thank you very much. Um, totals aren't totally in yet, but it looks like we raised close to $650 last night. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. So, thank you again. Uh, first, if you have your name in for a board or committee and you would like to come up and introduce yourself, now would be the time. Any board committee nominees? Okay, seeing none, we will recess City Council and shortly become the Community <laughs> Redevelopment Agency. Well, you, did we have, we had, we, just like sorry, that. We, just, I think we had one person that wanted to come up. Oh, did person. we have a board and committee nominee? Come on. Can't dawdle to be a puppet. We move along. Good morning. Hi there, good morning. Good morning. My name is Adam Cummings. I work for Edward Jones, and I had a couple of folks ask me to submit for the pension board, the police pension board, and if uh, you all wish for me to serve, I'd be happy to do so. If it's upsetting anyone's apple cart, I understand it was a last-minute thing, and I don't want to step on any toes, so it's just kind of your choice. Um, while I've got you, when the item comes up on the Bicycle, should you do choose to do so, I do have some funds from Team Punagorda that are for the hand crank bicycle if you choose to, to make that purchase. And the folks that made the donation need to know that it went for that purpose. So, <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I would like to call the CRA meeting to order. First, we have citizens' comments on CRA agenda items only, and all officials of the CRA are present, by the way. So citizens' comments on the minutes, the project status report, uh, signage at the bait and tackle shop, sale of commercial space in Harold Court. If anybody would like to comment on those items before we begin. Okay, seeing none, we have approval of the minutes. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. And then next we have the CRA monthly status report. Howard Kunick, CRA director. Well, we're up to 13 live aboards. Um, next week, it could be down to 12. But, you know, it fluctuates. Um, community room still doing well. And you see the pump outs. Um, I know there was discussion about trying to get the pump outs to some area really over in the West County, but I haven't heard more about that yet. Uh, Howard. When I was over there yesterday and I saw that Rusty has had to move, is that affecting our community room rentals? Um, it shouldn't because if it's rented, he's got to move, he's got to get out of there for the rentals. But we're trying to fix the leaks right. and the mold. So they uh, should have done another inspection yesterday. So they're working on it. Okay. I know the ship store has all the inventory in. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, they sure have. Yeah, I and more to come. Well. Uh, Lashley Park. The, the grass is really now starting to take shape. Mm -hmm. It's uh, looking much better. There are some soft spots that they've been fixing up. We've been noticing it with all the rain. Um, one side drains extremely well, and the other side not as well. So they're working on that. It's gotten better. However, uh, I don't know if you've been out there, but we've had some vandalism, mm. and it was, if you've really, if you went out there and looked at it, it is actually looks so perfect. It was like somebody took an edger mm -hmm. and edged it, because I don't think a vehicle could have just done that. 
well, being no, so perfect. Like, no, the, there are no tire tracks that go to, into it. It's actually the sod is gone. Yes. I mean, they, it's like a sod cutter. They use a sod cutter to remove the sod. Not only that, but I agree. You know, I told you I was going to go over there. And if I looked at the um, what they've done, and I agree with our police chief. I think that's the breast cancer sign. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. what it looks like and when you're right it there. It does. Mm -hmm. right. And it absolutely is perfect. It is. Right. It had to be somebody not like me, because I would have <laughs> gone all over the place. But it was absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anybody that's in that program that would do anything like that. Well, well we haven't solved it. Uh, <laughs> they, they scalped it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Uh, I don't what? know what. We're gonna, we have a quote to, to refurbish it, so we'll have to do that. It's just, it, it's just it's a shame. Yeah. Tom? Howard, the drainage issue, that's still being worked on by the contractor. It's the contractor's responsibility to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is that it covered by insurance? No. The sod? No, it's not. That is not covered by insurance. We, are, we do have a quote. Um, about $1,000. 1200 But we have not solved it. I guess if I have to look on the bright side of things, it's it, they just remove the sod, and the sod can grow back. When I was in high school, a group did something, and they used acid, and they burnt the pattern with acid, and it got into the soil, and it, they tried all kinds of things to remedy the situation, and it, for years, the pattern was still etched in that area. So I think, you know. Let's not give anyone any ideas. Any ideas. <laughs> for, the, for the viewing audience, if you have any leads on who may have created this symbol in our newly installed sod, we would like to know. Yes. Call Crime Stoppers, right? Yes, absolutely. Whoops. Um, Veterans Park, we, uh, we need to better report what's going on there. It's 85% of the funds for granite work has been received, just the granite work. They still need a lot of funds for everything else. They're having another, continually having fundraisers, but they're having a big one on eight, November on 8th, November yeah. 8th, yeah. yes. Moose Lodge. Moose Lodge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's gonna be an all day uh, event. <coughs> Community Park. Uh, we're going to let the construction bid this month. That's the community park in the Tribute Woods neighborhood. Downtown flooding phase two, it's basically done. Uh, the button woods are in, they look nice. And uh, we're waiting for now, we're doing closeout documents. And um, uh, Harvey Endurance, um, uh, draining very well. Olympia and McGregor, uh, not so well. That one block there, just not so well. Of course, we didn't do any work there either. So we'll see what we have to do there. Excuse but the me, others are doing nice. Do we, we don't have any funding for that, do we? No. Any kind of FEMA funding? No. And um, contract with uh, Weiler to do the uh, Harbor Walk West. Um, being amended so they can get started. FDOT giving us the okay. Oh, it is that the same scope of work that we have been talking about? Yes, it's from uh, it's from uh, the uh, hotel area to kind of the gazebo, just that section. And a time frame? Do you have a time frame for that? Well, it's we're not in a rush because we couldn't even consider. Uh, remember, the grant funds are not available for two years, although we could try and come up with a contract if we if we get the money if we have the money to front end it a year ahead of time. So there's no rush for this. Well, it would be nice if the drawings were done and we had them available to us should that kind of a situation uh, occur. Oh, oh, it'll be done in time for that. Okay. But again, if we don't, if the sales tax doesn't pass, then okay. we're talking two years. 
Any other questions for Howard? Hard on, on the first item where we talked about, or you talked about the uh, boat rentals and, and the community room. What funds does that uh, income go into? Uh, the Lashley Park Marina Enterprise Fund. Thank you. Okay, next item we have request for signage at the bait and tackle shop. <laughs> Good morning for the record, Terry Tubb, zoning official. Um, staff received the request for uh, signage for the new bait and uh, tackle shop um, at the old ship store building. Um, they occupy uh, this area uh, of the uh, building. And included in your packet was uh, first the uh, various window side signs. That first group is the front door and then the three windows to the right of the door. So it would be the lower windows and the upper windows. They're requesting 33% of or less of each window, which does meet the uh, sign code requirements um, per window. The next series of uh, window signs go down the side of the building and the last one in this right around the, this one goes in this last window here and then the um, Two uh, projecting signs. One would go by that very last window where people can go into the day room. The other would be at the front entrance door as a projecting sign. Uh, the only other sign that they, other signs they had requested currently, there, there and there has been for a number of years, this uh, live uh, bait sign that was on there. They proposed improving upon that, doing it with the permanent MDO board material with the vinyl letters on it and running the entire length of, of that vinyl uh, fence area. That particular location <coughs> does give uh, the uh, good signage for northbound traffic on, on 41. The uh, last signs are actually four facade signs and they're proposing three signs and it would be the three sides of that portion of the building, and those would be visible from the water, from where the vessels actually are. And, you know, those, you know, something up there at least so that the, you know, the vessels realize there is something there, um, I think would probably be helpful. So uh, some questions that were asked. Um, the facade sign will be made with individual plastic lettering attached to the uh, building face. Window signs will be done with uh, vinyl graphics. The two projecting signs will be made of wood materials and the lettering will be painted. The bait, bait well sign will be made with MDO board and vinyl lettering. And they will be hiring a professional sign company to install the signs and to pull the permit. So if you have any other questions, either I or the business owner, Salehi, is available. So are the signs going to be professionally done? Yes. Okay. And installed by professional sign company. Questions for Terry? Uh, yeah, I have one question. If we want this to be wildly successful, um, but if something were to happen and she were to um, not uh, continue the business, who is responsible for, for the facade signs that have been placed on the building? If it's not covered in the lease, then usually if a business just leaves, the building owner does get the responsibility of removing it. Okay. Tom? Terry, what's, how big are the facade signs? What's the, the size on those, I, I can? Could you put them back up on the screen? Are they, okay, it's yeah. there. Um, they are um, 42 inches in height and 72 inches. Square feet. Uh, 
um, they meet the requirements of a city center facade sign for sign band height and a single band. Since this is zoned public, um, we don't really have specific uh, sign regulations for publicly zoned property. City center uh, zoning is the closest surrounding zoning district, so we usually kind of go to what is permitted in the city center when we're looking at signs. Well, with our, our success rate there, I think that we want to give them every opportunity to succeed, mm -hmm. and if, if that's what it takes, well, we'll yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful building, and, it, and my first thought was, oh, but it's a, you know, this is a commercial venture. We have to allow them to succeed. We want them to, so. My, I guess my only question is, how does this impact the other businesses that are in attached there at Lashley Park, at Lashley Marina area, and the, and the Lashley Crab House? Uh, La, uh, the Lashley Crab House, um, they actually have a sign plan, and uh, they submit sign permits for the various businesses as they. And um, they are similar. Some of them are, it depends on what they request, yeah, but they would be along the same lines. Mm -hmm. We need a motion. I move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the request. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Good luck. Next we have a discussion of sale of commercial space in Harold Court Center. Howard. At the last um, CRA meeting, you asked we come back with op options regarding uh, what should we do with the 13,000 roughly square feet in the east building the, uh, for the Harold Court Center commercial area. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've come up with three options. Maybe somebody has more. First is status quo, and that is we continue to let our leasing agent uh, find tenants negotiate with tenants uh, along with the CRA director and bring you back some possible letters of intent. You discuss them publicly. We go back, we try and get a lease. Sometimes we're not so successful getting that lease, um, but that's the process. The second option is to just sell it. Come up with an appraisal, hire an appraiser to find out what that space really is worth. And we're just talking about the commercial space, not any of the parking. Um, we would come up with an appraisal and then put it out on the market for somebody to purchase. And um, then we're out of business. They, they have a co. We have a land development regulations which allow what types of businesses can get in there and they just follow the code. The third option is hire a firm such as a, a, a leasing agent to handle all of the tenant leasing for us, not maintenance, but the leasing end of things. We would give them parameters from which to work with. In other words, they can't lease space for $3 a square foot. That's way out of line. But we would give them parameters. They would then work with potential tenants. Um, they would have the authority, like uh, we do at the marina, to come up with contracts and uh, they would lease it out. They don't come in front of you. Uh, obviously, it's public information because all of the proceeds come to the CRA. But it's not, they don't have to discuss all of their business in the public forum. That's a possibility. I'll start off. The status quo is not working. I mean, we've had so many people come and go in this last cycle that it's just not not working out so whatever the pleasure is i think number two or number three is a possibility just to you know try to expedite or refresh in or whatever we need to do to try to get some interest kim and then nancy and then frank what about also considering leasing it like a land lease like we do fisherman's village or or lashley so that um you know, they could lease that. We could also do that so that they're into it. We're not, they're not representing us. We're not paying a commission. It's just like Fisherman's Village. They lease it, they rent it, they bring, you know, obviously they have to follow the mm -hmm. land development regulations, but 
that might be another option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be in favor of actually um, hiring a, a commercial uh, appraiser and option the second option and um, selling the space. Mm -hmm. To uh, that way, then we would be out of the business totally. Mm -hmm. And um, Frank? I think we need two things. I'd like to get uh, for the next meeting an appraisal, and then I'd like to have the, the staff give me the, what parameters they would set so we know what we're talking about. Uh, uh, the, before we send them off to sell it, we don't know right now what to do. So we can get an appraisal mm -hmm. for one, and then parameters what uh, staff would recommend would be really helpful to me. Well, I, I guess I like a combination. Uh, I like uh, Kim's suggestion in terms of leasing as well. And perhaps what we could do along with uh, what you have suggested, Frank, is to get both an appraisal for both selling and also for leasing and to see how we might go there. Um, and the other option, obviously, is, you know, uh, what probably the leasing might be, again, the middle component of actually contracting with a private firm, you know, to do the... Um, to leasing out the space. So uh, I like a combination, actually, so that we have, again, look at more options uh, before making a decision just to sell. Mm -hmm. Do you want to comment on what Kim was talking about, how that's different than option number three that Howard talked about? No, but what I wanted to briefly mention is that if you decided, <laughs> if you, if you decided to sell the units, um, we would need to establish a commercial condominium with the, com the condominium documents and bylaws and association and all that kind of stuff. So that's, mm -hmm. it's not just simply we're going to sell it, but that, that structure would need to be created. Unless you sold it all. Right. The whole complete thing, you, could, you wouldn't have to do that necessarily. You mean the whole entire garage? Yeah, if you sold the whole bottom floor. Oh, as one unit? Right. And then, well, you wouldn't have to have individual condos, but you would have to create the condo for the garage and then right. the bottom and and, we, and and how maintenance is going to be um, distributed between the city and the garage and the, the ground floor units and things of that nature. So the condo <laughs> concept would still apply even if we sold it as one big chunk because we have to separate the parking from the retail. Yes. Right? yes. Okay. Tom. Yeah. If we're going to consider selling it, I would like to uh, see how we actually came up with the cost of the space that we might consider selling. The, the numbers that I've seen so far uh, come out to about $50 a square foot as, a, as representative as a cost to build that space. I, I don't think that's fair and accurate, so I would like to see some more detail on what that space actually cost us to build. Wouldn't that come out of the appraisal? I mean, and you have a cost to build, but then you also have an appraisal of what the market will bear in terms of True. Uh, selling that space. I, I believe there, there are two different things. Yes. Very true. I like Kim's idea. I haven't, uh, hadn't thought of that. Uh, but I also would like to hear from Lindsay to see what um, the commercial um, property is, is uh, doing locally as far as the um, um, selling or whether uh, leasing. What does it look like here? I don't know commercial. I know residential, but I don't know commercial. Uh, Lindsay Harrington, for the record, uh, with Coldwell Banker Commercial Real Estate uh, here in downtown Ponte Gorda. Uh, the market has gotten a lot better. Uh, just this morning, matter of fact, just to give you an update, uh, I can't give you numbers for the local MLS, uh, which the listing is in, but on LoopNet in the last 180 days, it was exposed 3,713 times, and there was 90 times uh, the listing was actually opened and viewed and looked into, okay? Uh, on my Florida commercial real estate, uh, in the last year, it was viewed 201 times. This is a running tabulation, okay? So it's getting exposed, uh, basically one viewing per day on the internet. And so I would offer another option uh, and Howard and I have not talked in detail about this, but another option is a consideration of, of, of uh, lowering your ask price. I mean, you, you, you've already considered that already, but uh, I would uh, urge you in, in your analysis 
that you obtain what the market value is for leasing, and that's an actual number you can work with, and that's another avenue you could pursue. Uh, I would say to you right now, uh, with the exposure that uh, Bill and I gave it and that I've been giving it, uh, you know, our challenge has been that $16 figure. I just the other day uh, showed uh, some people downtown uh, a building that I have, which is just one block away, and we're asking $11 a square foot on it. Now, the renovation cost on the building, it's about 2,300 square feet, ground floor unit. Uh, the renovation costs are going to be kind of tremendous on that. And with you all, you got a vanilla, you know, uh, uh, plain wall building that you're offering $35 a square foot. The other challenge with that $35 a square foot now that I'm thinking about it is the fact that, that uh, you have to uh, put the AC in, and that eats up a good bit of that $35. Whereas you have at the Sunloft, in our experience with the Sunloft, they're offering a higher value to move in, and the air conditioner conditioning is already in. So you see that the, the challenges we have in the marketplace. Uh, now, there are other people in downtown Punta Gorda that are asking higher value. Uh, but they're smaller units, okay? Uh, there's one that's uh, uh, much larger. It's a uh, dollar less than us, okay? Uh, I say much larger. It's a unit that's about 3,000 square feet. It's, it's at 15, okay? Uh, there's, an, uh, there's a local uh, entrepreneur who has units downtown. He's leasing or trying to lease, keep maintain, and he's over $20 a square foot. But his units are smaller. They're like, you know, 1,900 square feet, something of that nature. Uh, but the commercial activity has picked up. There is interest. Uh, as a citizen, I'm concerned about, uh, as the Levin had said, uh, you know, you have to set up a condo association. And then with the condo association and marketing the building, uh, there's no control over the cost of the maintenance of the building. Uh, I think uh, the consideration that Kim gave uh, as to a, just leasing out like Fish Village is, is another smart approach uh, in looking at it. But again, I think Frank's comments uh, and other comments made, let's find out the value is probably the, the major step that you must take uh, to move forward. Find out what it's worth. Uh, my fear is Tom and I had talked earlier is you know, the value of downtown is like 50 bucks a square foot. And that's what, what Tom and I uh, spent time with uh, Ron Struthers, who's with our uh, sister company, Cold Banker NRT. And uh, he and I work in the same office together. And Ron is one of the top sales people in our company. He's probably in the top seven uh, in our state uh, in commercial sales. And uh, Ron offered uh, to consult with Tom, and, and, and we all sat in on it. And that's where we got the $50 figure. Uh, again, determining value uh, of the building and uh, determining the appraisal of the actual what it's really worth today to market appraise that at the, for, uh, for leasing, I think that's a very important item to, that you must start with. Kim and then Kim. I agree. I, and, and I think you're right. $50 is probably the number. That's why I like the leasing idea. I think 50 years ago, the people who sat up here thought the same thing about Fisherman's Village. It was there. It wasn't worth anything. Yes. Now it's mo one of the most valuable assets we have in the city. And I think we could possibly turn the parking garage around like that, too. I think if you had some if it was managed and leased by a private entity that would actually be trying to bring something down there, it would make it happen and it would increase the value of the property over the long run, just like Fisherman's Village did. I mean, it needs that. And, and if I may, uh, may, I think Ron offered that as, an, as uh, 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 the alternative which you've offered, uh, as Howard has offered to consider, and that is, you know, uh, putting it in the hands of somebody, letting it handle it and or the land lease is a good option too. Tom? I, I support that concept. My, my problem with selling it is we could conceivably sell an asset of the CRA for substantially less than what it's worth. So I'm, right. I'm not inclined to, unless we see numbers that would justify that, I would not be inclined to go that route. I would prefer to go along with what Kim suggested. So do we have consensus to at least move forward with an appraisal? Yes, yes. 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 definitely. An appraisal for both selling and for leasing. Is that correct? For the land lease. Yeah, I think that, that would, whatever you call it, the land lease. 
Yeah, the we, problem I, I I have questions about the land lease because if we did the management leases like we were talking about, um, we you know they would manage it for us, take a management fee, and then the city would be returned the balance of of the revenue. How does the land lease differ from that? Would we just they would just pay us a a yearly just like Fisherman's just like Village. Mm -hmm. They would pay just like Fisherman's Village, and hopefully we would get someone like Fisherman's Village who would actually manage it and market it. But Fisherman's Village, they built those buildings. We right. just lease them the land. Right. So we would just have to figure out what the value is with the building and the land together. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's Nancy. Yeah, I think that. Um, I appreciate everything that Lindsay and others have tried to do to market this. But whether it's selling it outright or, or establishing a lease like what we have with Fisherman's Village, we need to be out of this business. Right. And, and so that would be my objective is to be out of this business. We as a city have other um, things that we do and that we're good at. And we're not good at being <laughs> <more> detailed. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I would just still need some clarification and, you know, some financial information on yeah. the managed lease versus the land lease as far as what the city is going to be returned right. to but make a, a decision based on which way mm -hmm. that would go. But that's what a commercial real estate appraiser can do. Okay. They can would, come back and they can give us that kind of information. I, I would like to see both of those options as yes. well. Mm -hmm. And also, I think. In what should be included is that for whatever value it might have, we have 2,400 square feet of storage space. That should be part of the uh, consideration, I believe. Yes. I agree. I agree. Lindsay? Well, uh, I know Frank made mention of uh, two weeks, get back in two weeks. You're going to need to give them at least a month. No, I, I'm sorry. I, I said the next meeting. Oh, oh okay. Right. Yeah, okay. But again, I would urge you give an appraiser a month to go out because they're going to be going up and down 41, uh, looking for comparable properties and trying to make a determination, making adjustments, talking with other appraisers. Uh, it's going to take them a while. Lindsay, would they need the parameters on what it would, if we did a lease option, what our parameters would be? Would they need that to factor into their appraisal? Uh, I would think that that would help them. Uh, and making their determination. Uh, again, the two questions you want to put out is what's the value of the building? You, and Tom also need to know what do we have into it, or, or, or Carolyn said it, we need to know how much we have into it, where are we today, what do we owe? So you make a good decision. And then you need to know the value of, of what it would be to lease. You know, what's, what's the going market in the area for that building? I had, and to add on, I had an inquiry, which I told Howard yesterday about. I had someone call me up and ask, uh, what are the details on the CAM cost? So you've got somebody out there thinking right now about maybe a, a purchase and or maybe Kim's option, which would probably be more favorable to someone. There's a multitude of options you can exercise in that land, in that lease. Uh, you could take part of their, uh, what they take in and gross sales. Uh, there's, a, there's a multitude of, of considerations there, and you need to make a decision of what is the best option for you. The simplest is just a flat fee. And we do have a standard lease that they could look at, and we could agree that at the moment we could use that as a basis if they needed that. Tom? How, how significant is a, a very inaccurate an est estimate on what the, the CAM charges? We, I think we're right now using $4 a square foot. Yes, we are. Do we need to further quantify that or verify that, that that is, in fact, that number is in line with the, the maintenance of the facility? Uh, that's an internal decision you need to make. Uh, we, we have been using $4 since uh, we began. And I do not know the actual cost. Because I'm, hearing, $4 that, I'm what, hearing that we're still going to maintain the maintenance or we, we would need to verify whether four bucks a square foot right. is an accurate number. And, and th yes, you need, need to be able to adjust that accordingly. And that's going to be probably one of your problems in trying to market it because they're going to go, we have no control over these costs. We can't mm -hmm. bid them out. It's government bidding it out, not uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, who have the lease on that land lease on that ground floor. And so, look at that. you know, you got to be very careful there because people are going to go, I don't think I want to bid high bid on it. It's because of the risk. Oh, we don't. We don't well, have to. We don't have to continue to 
maintain it if somebody buys it. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. I would we think just, that uh, would be portion. incorporated right. with the, right. the, um, yeah. the lease arrangement. I, I think that let the people who have that lease totally manage it, have their own cam, figure that out. We'll take care of the parking garage. But yeah. you have the exterior of the building you've got to maintain, and, and there are things out there will happen just like the little sure. situation of the birds here recently. You know, uh, the city came in and worked with the bird situation there. And uh, I mean, you need, you got to be very broadly thinking about this to make sure you don't leave yourself going, oh my gosh, we never covered that. Mm -hmm. right. and, uh, well, we just have to think of those things. Right. But I think that if we, if they take care of that, because if, if we're just thinking about even a percentage of their profits, I mean, I would really like to, to really think of it in terms of leasing it to someone who's going to do exactly what Fisherman's Village did and mm -hmm. make a profit for themselves and we get a fair lease and they bring the business downtown. Right. That's, you know, our goal, my goal, mm -hmm. whatever. And that, that value you, you, you use, don't get trapped like we got trapped years ago. That's not worth much and we're now trapped into that lease. You want it adjusted every three, five, ten years based on the CPI or whatever else mm -hmm. you have. Don't get trapped, please. I, mm -hmm. I was here when that village went in. <laughs> Nancy? Tom mentioned uh, 2,400 square feet of, of storage space. I What's, believe it's about 2,400 square feet. It's in building. That can't be leased. Sorry? That, that, that area cannot be leased. Yes. It is, it is not flood proofed. Okay. The area where the storage is in the atelier is not flood proofed and that's why that is why the, the atelier is there. It, right. it, when it was built, there was a conscious decision made to not flood proof that side of the building. And so um, FEMA will not let you rent that out to, as a normal retail space. The, it has to, um, in order, if there was a flood event, the water has to be able to flow through there. Right. And that's why in the atelier there are cages. We could not put up walls. I'm, and, I'm not suggesting that it get rented for commercial space, but rented for storage. It can't be. It has to be free. Lindsay? What you could consider is flood proofing that part and making it, uh, you know, that it could be leased out. I mean, some of it because the head, head room is not viable, but you could certainly store there. Uh, but the question, there's another question here. Is storage, does storage follow, uh, fall under the same rules under FEMA as actually occupying with a, uh, no. an office like Tom is, is alluding to? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about leasing it for office space. No. There's storage in there now. Yeah, yeah. City, right, we do. We, are, we can use it, but if somebody was going to lease that to store things, they have to realize the risk. Sure they would. Yeah, and yeah sure so they would. Assume okay, so we have consensus to move forward with an appraisal. Do you an have appraisal. another direction? We have a, we're going to do an appraisal on an outright sale and different types of leases, land lease, managed lease, and um, we'll have to do proposals, see what comes back, and hire somebody. Okay. Right. okay. I, I, I want to make a point. You, I would suggest what is the lease rate, what's the viable lease rate, for that size, those size structures downtown, not for leasing the entire floor out and, and allowing someone to purchase that lease for a period of time. I'm talking about the lease rate, which is going lease rate market value currently for that, those units. Well, that's a, that's a different thing. It's Do you want that as well? It's a different thing. Do you I want that as well? I don't. I don't, I don't want to be in the business of leasing out these stores. Okay. That, I, that personally, mean. I think that. I agree. I agree with that. And that's changing. I mean, I've been, I've been, a lot of people are looking for property yeah, right they are. now. And that's what I'm saying. I think it's, you know, it's very opportune time for us to do this, to, to lease this, to give someone the opportunity to really make a great business uh, downtown. And it would be great for the other businesses downtown. So it would be wonderful for the county for all the space they need. Amen. <laughs> with a question with the lease, a legal type question, um, if we're just leasing, then we don't have to create the condo. We just do all the maintenance and stuff through the contract with the leasing agent, or the that's how we handle it. We don't have to condo it out. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just one question: If Sophie's Choice comes up with a with a signed lease and, and Morgan Stanley as well during this process, what do, what do we do? 
Do we put them on hold? Or? As, as of Monday, Morgan Stanley is still moving along. Uh, Howard and I talked about that, and the They're mayor talked about government. that yesterday. <laughs> and uh, uh, They're slower than we as of, <laughs> And there's been a message to Ms. Cousins uh, asking her to please make a decision on what she wants to do, and that's, that was done this week as well. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to We'll it. cross the bridge. Yeah. We'll cross those two bridges, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Lindsay. Thank you. Okay, next we have citizens' comments. If you would like to comment, please come to the podium, state your name. You have three minutes. Dom McCormick, for the record. Uh, there was an aspect missing from the conversation this morning. I think it's important. It is not a one-story building with um, typical costs associated with in interior improvements. Uh, the, the gist of my comment is it is not a, a slam dunk. The, the flood proofing has made it very difficult for anybody to make any kind of uh, repairs or changes in, in piping in, in the lower structure. And if you put a restaurant in there, you're going to have to penetrate two floors of uh, garage. So I guess what I'm saying is be prepared for a, a, a price on this building that is not all wonderful. There, there are serious considerations. If the person's going to invest in this building, he's either going to be looking at enormous costs of, of building up the infrastructure or he's going to be limited in who he can rent to. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? Please come to the podium. State your name. You have three minutes. Uh, Jay Buckley in a little different hat uh, as a member of MAC committee. Just to comment on the on the pump out boat, uh, the discussion about having the boat service that area on the west side up close to Lemon Bay has pretty much been put on hold because that total operation up there is illegal. Uh, it's not uh, a designated marine field. People are living aboard. They're throwing their waste overboard. And so MAC pretty much threw the omen on the uh, uh, sheriff's department to clean up an illegal act rather than us contribute to it. So I don't think you're going to hear too much about that for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? Three minutes. Uh, Adam, <laughs> they always give me that warning. <laughs> I, uh, um, I just wanted to elaborate on the donation for the bicycle, again, should you choose to do it, that uh, I wanted to mention that your own Councilman Cavanaugh contributed. Um, there were some folks that had contributed to team, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, we had a contribution from Tom and Pam Marciniak and a host of an American Groundskeeper Lawn Service and a host of uh, uh, oh, staff from the Watitsky firm and a host of other small anonymous donors. It's not, you know, going to pay for the whole bike. It's only about $172. The effort was still ongoing to try to raise some funding for it. I had been talking to some folks from the Ricky King Fund south <coughs> of here. Um, it's a small nonprofit. Normally they only give to families uh, with disabled children. Uh, but the, the executive director had said she'd take it to the board. I'd be surprised, should we proceed, that they would still move ahead with that. But um, they, she did mention that they have a uh, network amongst the people that they serve to let people know when these types of facilities are, or bicycles and amenities are available. And so I was a couple of groups that I was hoping that I could reach out to and hopefully make people aware so we could draw some more people in for that amenity and hopefully draw another uh, client base into Punta Gorda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? We have commissioner comments. We'll start with Carolyn. None. Thank you. No, thank you. No. Nothing. No, thank you. No. Okay, we are adjourned. Carolyn, anybody want a five minute? Might as well. Okay, we'll take a five minute. <laughs> uh, we will reconvene. Uh, we'll take a six minute at ten o'clock. <laughs> did you put? Did you put the?